Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and today I want to share with you the supplies that accompany the third grade Waldorf curriculum by live education. Now some of these supplies are necessary to do this curriculum and other supplies are additional supplies that I found useful for this curriculum but are certainly not necessary. Now, this video is part of a series of videos for the third grade. In other videos, I show you my children's main lesson books from this year. I show you the books and resources that we have used in order to complement this curriculum, as well as the handwork projects for third grade. All right, so I wanna quickly show you this curriculum. It's not very big. It comes with six different books, and this is going to make up the information and resource that the parent or the teacher will use in order to put together the lessons for the student. They're set up as main lesson blocks, so each one of these books makes up a main lesson block, and most of them take several weeks to complete, but the language arts main lesson block can run parallel to another main lesson block, and with the math, it's important to keep those math skills going every day. All right, so the main lesson blocks for the third grade year are humanity on earth, shelter, clothing, and farming. And you'll need quite a bit of supplies if you intend to do these hands-on projects in this particular main lesson block. So it will take a little bit of pre-planning. Time, weight, measure, and money, the math of practical life. There are some projects that you can do for this main lesson block and I really encourage you to do them since they're going to make this particular main lesson block the information really come alive. Hebrew myths and culture, prophets and kings, and Hebrew myths and culture, creation and patriarchs. These two main lesson blocks are going to make up two of the three history main lesson blocks for the year. In one of the main lesson blocks, you're going to get a lot of information on the festivals and the celebrations, the Hebrew alphabet, and some form drawing. There's also going to be some lessons in here. And then for this main lesson book, you're going to get a lot more of the lessons for this history block, as well as some examples of the artwork that you can use as inspiration for your own artwork for the main lesson books. Literature, grammar, spelling, and word families. This main lesson block coordinates with the history main lesson blocks and because this is something that you want to do on a regular basis, these lessons are going to be fairly short and they're going to complement the history main lesson blocks of the year. There aren't that many hands-on projects for this particular main lesson block, but you can make flashcards so you can just have some extra index cards around if you want to do that. The last history block for the year is Myths and Culture of Cod and Sumer. And there's a lot of watercolors in this main lesson block. So I'm going to show you some of the supplies that will make doing the watercolors a little bit easier for you. All right, so let's start with the basic supplies for third grade. Now, some of these supplies you probably will already have had around if you have been doing a Waldorf inspired approach with your homeschool. And some of these things you're going to need throughout the years. It's just that they're going to change a little bit year to year. So the main lesson books for third grade, you're going to have the landscape orientation and you're also going to have the portrait orientation. And at this grade, you'll notice that they're a little bit smaller than the ones that you might have seen in first grade and maybe second grade, depending on your student's ability. You will be starting with the largest main lesson books and then you're going to get progressively smaller. So this size main lesson book would work well for second, third and fourth grade. And then as they get older, they get smaller and the papers are lined. In this case, both sides are blank and this will work really well for the drawing for the main lesson and then the writing since at third grade, they may not be ready for the really small writing. They still may need a larger space for the lettering. And so this size main lesson book seems to work really well. So along with the main lesson books, you're going to need to have some kind of writing tool. Now I've got a few to show you here. Let's start with the pencils first. I've got four different pencils from a couple different manufacturers. The first one I wanna show you is the Lyra Furby pencil and this one is triangular shaped. It's gotten a little bit damaged here, but the thing is is that it makes it really easy to hold and this is also really thick, so this would work really well for first and second grade if you are using a pencil. Otherwise, you'll still be probably using the stick crayons or color pencils, which are also this size. If your student is ready to transition into a smaller pencil, there's the Lyra pencil here. This one is also triangular shaped, but the size of the pencil is smaller. 
And then I have another pencil here to show you. I can't tell what the brand is here, but it is larger than a traditional pencil, but it is circular now. The barrel is circular. And these three pencils that I showed you, the lead is a little bit softer than your typical number two pencil, but I also have the typical number two pencil to show you here, which I believe is hexagon shape. The barrel is hexagon shape. Of course, it comes with the eraser. And this is a, a great pencil to transition into about third fourth grade so if your child is ready for the smaller pencil then this is a good one this is I think just a standard brand it's just this nice kind of natural color all right so for erasers this has been one of my favorite erasers for a long time this is a sand eraser it's by Tombow and the reason why I like it is because it's actually for ink and I've noticed that it works really well with our color pencils it doesn't take it completely out but it does help if the students have made a mistake with color pencils and it works exceedingly well with just regular pencils. What I've noticed is that a lot of times our erasers, if they're just the typical kind, if they haven't been used in a while and you go to erase it, you end up leaving marks on your page that can't come off or sometimes the eraser gets brittle. So I really like this eraser. We've had it for a long time and it's worked really well for all kinds of different art mediums. So let me show you the crayons and the color pencils that the third grade student probably will still have. Now, if you've been doing Waldorf for a while, then these will look familiar. They are the block crayons as well as the stick crayons. And in first grade, your student probably will have had the three primary colors of the block and maybe even the stick crayons. So they'll have the blue and the yellow and the red. And then when they move into second grade, they will be creating their secondary and tertiary colors. So they won't need more crayons, but the full sets have 12 colors and then you can even get additional additional colors as well. So for the third grade student, it's nice to have these crayons on hand so that they can use the block crayons in order to do the borders for their main lesson books. If your student isn't ready to write with a thin pencil or even a thick pencil, you can use the stick crayons to write simple sentences into the main lesson book. This works really well for about one sentence or a couple of spelling words, but it's not going to work really well if you want to write more than a sentence or two. So it depends on your your student's ability and how much he or she can write, it will determine whether you're you will still be using the stick crayons or you'll be transitioning into either the color pencils or the pencils. So let me show you some of the options for color pencils for this year. There's the Lyra brand of these color pencils. These ones are thick. It's also a six-sided barrel. They're really easy to hold. They provide a nice amount of color because they are thicker than the traditional smaller color pencils. So this is a good option. Your student might have had these in second grade. If not, I highly recommend you getting them for third grade and beyond because they're going to be a great staple supply for your homeschool. The other color pencils that we've really enjoyed over the years are these Lyra color pencils. They are a lot smaller and we've used them starting at around fourth or fifth grade and on. Now, the only reason why I wouldn't recommend these for third grade is because the main lesson books are still fairly large and you're gonna go through your color pencils really fast if you're coloring in the entire page with a color pencil like this. So this is something that we've had happen a lot with our main lesson blocks is that we will go through the earth tones of these color pencils really fast and we will be done with the greens and the blues and the browns and we'll be left with a lot of reds and pinks and purples because you end up going through a lot of these just because of the types of drawings that you end up doing. So if you anticipate doing a lot of drawing for the younger years, then these ones are going to last you longer just because there's so much more of the color for these color pencils. Now the Furby brand is going to be triangular in shape versus some of the other ones which are going to be hexagon in shape and so if you have a young student or if you have multiple age students and you're trying to just find one product that's going to meet the needs of multiple students then I would recommend getting the triangular barreled Furby color pencils they come in about 12 colors there may be sets that have more colors and then there are also the skin tone colors as well 
So here are a couple more of the skin tones. I can't remember how many colors come in the skin tone set, but it came with a nice assortment of browns and tans. And we use them not just for skin tones, but we use them also just for regular drawing because they came with a nice range of browns. Okay, so let's move on to some of the other art supplies that you will probably need for third grade. The next thing I want to show you are the watercolors that I highly recommend you getting for this grade, especially since there is going to be a whole main lesson block that encourages watercolors as the artistic representation for those lessons. So in general, I use the Stockmar watercolors. Now these come concentrated, so you do want to dilute them. I have this little paint holder here that has the wooden block and then it has these cutouts so that you can put the jars in. This is really convenient. That way the jars don't tip over you don't end up with a mess and then you can also seal them if you need to work on a project over a couple of days but I don't recommend you storing these long term they will end up with a mold growth and it doesn't smell very good so don't store these for longer than say two to four weeks maybe six weeks and so along with the watercolors you'll also need some paint brushes and probably in kindergarten or first grade, you would have had this wide brush. And so if you still have that in your supplies, then go ahead and keep it for third grade because the watercolors are still going to be really broad and not very defined. And so the broad brushes are going to work better. I also have a couple of other paint brushes to show you. And I have mixed thoughts about all of these. So I wanna share with you my thoughts on them. These are the ones that I purchased from a Waldorf supplier and they were really pricey and I found that I didn't like them as much as this fairly cheap set that I picked up at a local craft store. I don't know if these bristles are natural or synthetic. I'm guessing they are synthetic, but these ones are all natural fibers. I think it's squirrel hair, but I'm not sure. So if you're vegan, then these wouldn't be a good option for you. I would recommend getting some of these. I recently purchased a new set of synthetic paintbrushes and I was really disappointed with them because they were so chemically rich with whatever processing they did that I had to leave them outside for over a week just to diminish the smell. So I was really disappointed with the quality of however they were manufactured or the materials that were used. But in general, these ones that I picked up from a local craft store, I believe it was Michael's and it was probably like eight to 10 years ago, have been such winners and they were really affordable. So uh, I would say that when it comes to watercoloring, go with a paintbrush that you feel most comfortable with from a price perspective and also from your own principles, whether you prefer the natural products or you prefer the synthetic products. Uh, one thing is that when you are done watercoloring, be sure to clean your brushes immediately and dry them. I usually just use a paper towel to gently dry them and then I let them air dry upright. I'll just put them in one of our little jars and I'll let them finish air drying upright and never store them until they're completely dry. Sometimes I wait one or two days. You just don't want to damage your paint brushes with uh, extra paint that hasn't been washed off or any mold that could grow. The other thing is that since we don't usually use acrylic paints and oil paints, this isn't really a problem for us because if you do use those paints, you do want to wash them immediately because you can damage your paint brushes permanently, especially with acrylic paints if you don't wash them off. If you don't get to your watercolor paintbrushes immediately, it's not the end of the world. I just recommend uh, creating those good habits right from the start. Okay, so uh, those are the paint brushes and the paints. Let me show you the paper that we have used. Now, there are a variety of qualities of paper when it comes to watercolor paper. And this one I find to be a really good middle ground when it comes to quality. This is by Fabriano. They have so many different varieties. I bought this off of Dick Blick online and they have ones that vary in the weight of the paper 
paper, whether it's cold press or hot press, and of course it comes in various sizes. Now this size, which is 9 by 12, I'm, I'm showing you the paper here, but this is actually a larger size, but the 9 by 12 size I really like if we're going to be binding our artwork into a main lesson book because that seems to be a good size for use and for storage, and it's it tends to not be too big for any of our narration. This paper, I believe, is 10 by 14 inches, and this one's really great for the younger ages, but this paper, because it's only 90 pound, isn't really suitable for wet on wet watercoloring. If you wanna do wet on wet watercoloring, which I do recommend for this age still, I would recommend getting the Strathmore 140 pound paper, and you can see that this one is very large, which is suitable for kindergarten, first and second grade. You could cut this paper down in half like this, and then you would end up with a paper that's this size and that would also be suitable for the third grade student. When you're doing your wet on wet watercoloring, you want to be able to spritz your paper or run it under water or soak it temporarily in a basin of water. You don't want to let it go too long. However, this paper is so high quality that it's not going to be damaged. However, if you use a a lighter paper or a paper that's not good quality. If you soak this in water, it's going to start to break apart and it's not going to hold up well. So if you want to do wet on wet with a paper that's 90 pound or just not as good quality, I would recommend just spritzing the page lightly and then working that way rather than soaking your paper completely. This paper is strong enough to be soaked completely. And of course, if it starts dry, you can always spritz it with some water. Now, once you remove it from the water, you'll probably notice that there are still water spots and pools of water on here. So you can just use a sponge and kind of mop up that extra water before you start water coloring. You just wanna make sure that there's a nice sheen to the paper, but you just don't want it running with water. So these are some of the projects that we did in the third grade curriculum. They're in the main lesson book on Akkad and Sumer. And while we did do these for our main lesson book, which was done on watercolor paper, similar to this one, which was either 90 pound or a little bit heavier, we also went ahead and we did a larger one using this Strathmore paper, which I really like. However, this paper is very expensive. So I recommend using this only for a guided watercolor lesson rather than having a lot of this on hand just for the kids to play with. My kids love to do their own water coloring once we're done with a lesson or to begin a lesson. So I do stock up on some less expensive watercolor paper so that they can have a good time working with their watercolors. One last bit of advice is that be sure to teach your children how to use the watercolor brushes correctly right from the start. I noticed that with my three boys, they tended to be too hard and too rough with the watercolor brushes and they would end up getting the metal all the way onto the paper just because they press down so hard. So it's it's supposed to be a light stroke. And so teaching them from the start, which for my kids ended up taking a long time for them to learn, will help preserve your paintbrushes and ensure that they do last from child to child. All right, so I wanna show you some of the supplies that you'll need for Humanity on Earth, shelter, clothing, and farming. And at the back of the book, there's going to be some examples of the handwork projects that you can do. So I wanna show you some of the supplies that we have used in our homeschool over the years. The first thing is a loom. And if you don't have a wooden loom like this, I have a couple of tutorials on how you can make your own just using cardboard or chipboard. So having a loom is going to be really great because it's going to incorporate a couple of different handwork lessons all in one. So with the weaving, you can do this with yarn. I like the Lamb's Pride Worsted and Bulky Weight Yarn. By the third grade, the student can be using the worsted weight, but for your weaving projects, I recommend using the bulky weight just because it makes the project go by a little bit faster. The thinner the yarn, the longer it's going to take. And I find that the third grade student is, is learning to be patient, but also is still a little bit hasty and wanting to see results with their projects. So I recommend using the bulky weight when possible, but third grade is also a great year to transition into the worsted weight. 
All right, so you could just use the yarn that you purchase or you could make your own. And another product that will be really great for the third grade student is having a drop spindle. You can also make these. This one is gorgeous, however. I'll leave a link down in the description box below where I got this one. And you can use your wool and you can spin your own yarn. And then you can use that yarn in order to do your weaving projects. And then once you're done with your weaving projects, you can use this to create clothing, which will work really well with the main lesson block on clothing shelters and farming. Now one additional thing that you could do if you have access to it is you could actually get your own wool from a sheep or a sheep farmer or you can go to a farmer's market where they will have this and you can card your own wool and clean it and then you can spin it and then additionally if you have sheep then you could actually go through the entire process of shearing the sheep and then ending up with clothing and I think it, to see that whole process is so important for the nine-year-old child to really understand where these products are actually coming from and also have the satisfaction of actually making something that's useful from them. With the wool, you can also do wet felting projects. You can use this wool to do the core of the ball and then you can use some of the nicer colored wool in order to do the outside of the ball. And once you complete the wet felting project, you can use some embroidery floss in order to decorate your wet felted ball. So this is another component to the curriculum. It's not a matter of just making these practical projects. It's also the act of beautifying these projects. And so doing this embroidery is going to be perfect for the third and fourth grade student. I'm going to show you what you can do with this a little bit later on in this video. So the third grade student is going to continue with his or her knitting skills. Knitting is introduced in the first grade and so by third grade the student should know how to knit and purl and then you can start to knit things that are going to have practical purposes like hats or caps or scarves or mittens. And so this is a scarf that one of my sons knit several years ago. And so that's an example of one of the projects you can do and the materials that you'll need to do them. Along with the scarves and the mittens, having a lot of extra fabric on hand is going to be perfect for this age student so that he or she can start to think about sewing some garments or clothing and that again works really well with this main lesson block. So in addition to having some cloth on hand, I also recommend having a good pair of scissors as well as needles and thread for these projects. Now you don't have to go out and buy buy some fabric just for this purpose. This happens to be some remnant fabric from another project. I also have a lot of old curtains that I let my kids cut up and create projects with. And speaking of those projects, having extra fabric on hand is also going to be really helpful for this main lesson block on the shelter part of this main lesson block because creating shelters is going to be another activity that the children are going to be engaged in. And while there are some more complicated shelters having just some dowels and fabric and maybe some clips works really well for creating simple forts within the home. I forgot to show you the crochet hook. Now in general, knitting is preferred over crochet work because knitting requires cross body action when you're knitting but doing crochet work in third grade is a good time to introduce it as well as continuing with your knitting. You can also introduce this younger, but I wouldn't introduce it in lieu of doing your knitting. So let me move on to some of the other supplies that you'll need for just general projects that can accompany multiple main lesson blocks. Having some modeling clay, this is beeswax, is going to be really great, not just for the active student that needs some tactile experience throughout the main lesson blocks, but this is going to work really well with multiple lessons. Some of the projects that you can do with your modeling beeswax is to create little birds or an egg to complement one of the stories that you might have been reading for that day's main lesson block. You can use this kind of wax for other things as well. Uh, I've used them as manipulatives in the past and also you can get it as these thin sheets of beeswax and then you can use this to 
cover an egg, for instance, that's been made with all the leftover wax that you'll end up having if you've been homeschooling using a Waldorf curriculum for a while, because I know that my kids love to work with the wax, but over time it just ends up like a big mess of random pieces of wax. So you can use that as the core of your projects and then you can cover it with this nice bit of new wax. It's in these beautiful colors, it's in these nice sheets. You can also use this to cut out shapes to decorate your egg or your candles. I'm gonna show you some of the candles a little bit later on in this video, but this is also a nice product to have on hand. My kids love working with this beeswax and the modeling clay. If you don't want to get this particular kind of modeling clay, either you're vegan and you don't want to use any of the beeswax or you're finding this to be out of your budget, any kind of modeling paste or dough will work. And so another great alternative is just using potter's clay. This is a potter's clay that needs to be fired at a high temperature, so it's not gonna work for long-term projects, but this works really great for short-term projects and it really helps the student get a feel for the modeling clay and to work with this product. And it's a great activity for all ages, but it's going to work really well for the third grade student if he or she is making practical things to accompany the main lesson block so I want to show you what that might look like. Here are a couple of bowls that we made. I think this one was originally supposed to be a candle holder but it was too large and this is a bowl that was made over a year ago so you can see it's held up pretty well but you can see all of these cracks in here because this was only air dried. If you dry this in a kiln it will be a lot more sturdy and you won't see these cracks this way. You could glaze it. It'll look really beautiful. So this is another Another option for the third grade student is to make these things out of clay. It's very practical because it works with that part of the curriculum for making practical things for their shelters and their clothing, but then you can also beautify this with different artwork or engravings or with different kinds of glazes. So this is another fantastic project if you have a chance to do that. Modeling in general is going to be really good for the student. Even if it's just clay that you find in your backyard, let them work with it. It's going to be really good for their development. Let me show you some of the other things that we've done in third grade that we've really enjoyed. All right, so let me show you some of the other supplies that you'll need, especially if you wanna do any candle dipping. You'll need either a candle pot or you can makeshift one yourself just using a pot and a glass container inside that pot. You fill it up with water and then you are good to go. You will need some wax. I recommend this brand by Topanga. The beeswax is amazing. I'm gonna leave a link down in the description box below. This is beautiful, it smells wonderful. I believe it's been filtered, but it's not refined. So you're getting just beeswax without any of the extra little bits. It smells amazing. And one of the perks is that when you burn beeswax candles, you're actually purifying the air. It's a great tradition that we've had in our family for a really long time. We tend to burn candles at the start of our school day. We do so throughout the fall and the winter, and we tend to just kind of not do it as much in the spring. So what you'll need is your pot and you just fill it up with your beeswax and then it takes a little while to melt and then you can start dipping your candles. You're going to also need some of the candle wick material. This one is waxed and especially made for dipping candles. We have also used some Baker's twine in the past and that has worked pretty well as well. You are going to need quite a bit of candle wax if you want to get these nice long tapers. Another option is that once you have done most of your tapers, you can see that they do get smaller over time as you use up the wax, but at the bottom, like when there's not that much wax left, I tend to use that and I just fill it up into jars and then we can burn those really safely in our homeschool room. Now there are a number of shelters that are shown here at the beginning of this main lesson block and while it might not be feasible to build them all in child size you can make little miniature models of them so I've got some supplies here I want to show you on how to do that and then I also want to encourage you to try at least one larger size shelter you can do a survival shelter at the park you can also build a teepee with dowels pretty easily especially if you have a lot of that extra fabric laying around so let me show you some of the supplies 
to make smaller shelters, which I think are going to be fantastic if you can't build larger ones. We have this cast from a Middle Ages castle building kit and we bought some more plaster of Paris and we actually colored the brick with some watercolors and other inks in order to do these bricks in different colors. And you could use these products in order to build a miniature of this kind of shelter. You just need the sticks to go across the top and this would work pretty well. You could also make your bricks out of your potter's clay. It may be a little bit more challenging to get them all the right size, but then again, that would also be really instructional and educational for this project. You can also build your own little TP. Now this happens to be a kit that we got from Rainbow Resource, but the supplies are fairly simple. I think you could probably DIY one of these on your own pretty easily. And then a few years ago for one of our Middle Ages main lesson blocks, we built built a yurt as part of our Silk Road studies and this one was really simple to make. You just use bamboo skewers and tape so it was super simple to make and then you can even cover the top with a little bit of wool felt if you want. Now along with the shelter building skills, I wanna show you some of the other projects that you can do. This is a basket weaving kit that we picked up from, I believe, Acorn Naturalist. Came with all the supplies you need in order to weave some baskets. And once we had the instructions, we just need to get more pine needles in order to make more. So this was a great investment. I believe it also came with the weaving needle. And this is a great, upcycling project. You can make them in all different shapes and it also will go very well with a Native American Indian main lesson block or to accompany this main lesson block or to do one completely on its own as part of this unit. And something else that I think would complement the survival skills aspect of this main lesson block and also complement a Native American unit study would be to have this fire drill, which is a Native American fire drill. I don't remember where I got this one from, but I'll try to link a similar product down in the description box below. Please do supervise your children if they are going to be using this fire drill or anything related to matches and burning and fire because you'll be surprised at how quickly they can actually start a fire. So be cautious with that. And then some handwork projects that will work well are these different like Indian and leather kits. Uh, these ones were both purchased from Rainbow Resource. They had a variety of them from leather notebooks to leather pouches and wallets. And this one is a headband that you can also decorate. I think both of these would complement this main lesson block really well and work with handwork as well. Something else that I would recommend having on hand is just some rope and extra fabric and even some clips because your kids are going to really enjoy the shelter building part of this main lesson block and having enough of those tools and supplies around is just going to make it so much easier for them in order to experiment and create these different shelters. I wanna show you one more product that my kids have really been enjoying that I think would work well for third grade and up and it is this knot kit and it comes with all the supplies you need in order to create these knots. And what's really fantastic is that it comes with these chipboard pieces to help you create the knots. It comes with the rope, which is being used right now, as well as some carabiners. So I really highly recommend this kit. My kids have really enjoyed it. And if your kids are at all interested in making knots or building shelters, I think this kit will be great. I believe it's by Haba, and I will try to find a link for you uh, uh, down in the description box below. All right, so let's move on to the farming portion of the shelter clothing and farming main lesson block. I only have just a couple of supplies to show you here, but I highly recommend uh, including a field trip to a farm if possible and creating a little garden, either an indoor garden, like an herb garden on your windowsill or uh, a couple of pots in the backyard or on your front porch because this is going to be really fantastic for this unit. In fact, I think it's really fantastic to always have a garden. If you've been doing the Waldorf curriculum for any period of time, you know that tending a garden starts as young as kindergarten and the benefits are extensive. My kids have really enjoyed this part of the curriculum. In fact, I think I've enjoyed it more than they have. Now the supplies you'll need for this main lesson block are some seeds, 
potting soil, some pots, and if possible, it would be great to get seeds that relate to the grain part of this main lesson block. Corn and wheat and barley would be great additions, especially if you can go from seed to harvest to baking bread with that wheat. It's really going to connect the whole process together and be really educational and profound for that third grade student. All right, so the last couple of supplies I want to show you are related to the math main lesson block. Now these things you'll be able to start using as young as first grade, and they're going to be a great way to bring kinesthetic movement into your math lessons. Now this works especially good once the students have already been introduced to some of their math facts. I find it's a great way to reinforce them. So the first thing I want to show you are these counting sticks. You can use this for skip counting, you can do something like one, two, three, four, five, six, and you don't need the sticks. You can do it with your hands too. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then eventually you can do the skip counting where it's just three, six, nine, or you can get creative and you can do three, six, nine. So I've noticed that my boys have really, really loved using the sticks as part of their math facts memorization and retention and practice. Uh, so I recommend that if you do want to make these, they're very simple to make. I just got these dowels from the hardware store. I recommend using the hardwood over the maple wood. Find that they weigh better, they feel better in your hands, and they give a nice deep sound versus the more hollow sound you'll get from maple wood. So this is a super simple project that you can DIY in no time. It's very cost effective as well. A couple other things that you can actually make to coordinate with your math lessons and also work well with the sewing part of the clothing and shelters and farming main lesson block are these bean bags that can be used for tossing back and forth in order to memorize math facts. My kids love doing this. We especially do this with our multiplication tables. And so each of us will have a bean bag and we'll say something like, four is two times two and we'll toss it back to each other and then we'll do six is three times two and we'll toss it back to each other but we're tossing with the right hand catching with our left hand and then moving it to our right hand so that again you have that cross body action so either diy some bean bags or buy them but they're going to be great supplies for your math main lesson block the last thing i want to show you you've seen before this is the felted ball that's been embroidered this is another great thing that you can use for tossing back and forth to memorize your math facts and of course it's so beautifully made the students will really enjoy having something that they've made that they've beautifully and then they're using to learn their math facts. Now, if you've ever wondered whether this actually helps or not, let me just tell you from experience that my kids have loved to toss bean bags back and forth or balls back and forth when learning their math facts. They actually ask for it. So if you've ever struggled with math, this might be a good way to get your children inspired to learn math and practice it. I have one more thing to share with you for the third grade curriculum, and that is the key to measurement series. There's English units, and there are also the metric unit books. Now, because linear measurement is introduced in the third year, you may consider using some of these workbooks in order to reinforce those ideas. Now, I never used these books for my third grade student. I usually waited to use the workbooks to reinforce the material that my children learned until it had been a full year since they had learned that material. So when I used these books, it wasn't until fourth or fifth grade. Once they were familiar with these concepts. You may do as you wish. I really like these workbooks. Find them to be very easy, very straightforward. There aren't any tricky questions. It stays focused on one particular point rather than having a lot of additional types of questions that might be part of a review for the math lesson. This one stays really focused. Now there are four books in this series. You have English Units of Length, measuring length and perimeter using English units, finding area and volume using English units, and English units for weight, capacity, temperature, and time. Now the math main lesson block is going to go over time, linear measurement, volume, weight, 
and money. So you may not have covered all of the information by the time you get to these workbooks if you're going to use it with the third grade student. But I find that these workbooks are really well designed and laid out. So even if you haven't been introduced to a particular subject area before, it does so in a very easy, progressive manner that it's it's practically child-led where the student doesn't need a lot of additional help from the teacher. The times that my students have needed additional help is when they haven't been quite ready for the concept and I need to help them through it. But because I tend to wait on these workbooks until my students already have a familiarity with the subject areas or if my students are older than the typical age for covering these concepts, I find that my students can work on them on their own. So in addition to the English units of measurement, there's also the metric units of measurement and each of these books is the same it just goes through metric units rather than English units you can also get the answer keys that go along with these books I highly recommend that you do so now these are readily available online we purchased ours from rainbow resource and we have used the entire series and we have really enjoyed them my third son is going through these books now and I intend to use it again with my fourth Fourth child. There are a couple projects I want to tell you about in the math main lesson block that we've done in the past but I don't have examples right now to show you but is the sundial and the water clock. Now the water clock is really easy to make with things that you can find in the kitchen and the sundial can also be made pretty easily but in the past we have used kits that we have found from Rainbow Resource in order to do our sundials and it's worked really great for this main lesson block as well as our ancient Rome and ancient Greece main lesson blocks. The last supply I want to show you is a book resource that the history curriculum recommends you get and that would be on the Hebrew myths and culture, creation and patriarchs and prophets and kings. It recommends getting two resources. One is a children's Bible and the other one is legends of the Bible. When we did this main lesson block we actually used our own resources so I don't have either of these books to show you. We use the prophets of Allah by Ik publishing but the main lesson block does recommend having an additional resource so that is one thing that I don't have here to show you that you do want to pick up so that you can complement the main lessons that are in this book with those two book resources. All right, so I think that covers most of the supplies you'll need for the third grade year. Don't forget to check the other videos in this third grade playlist. I have another video dedicated to all the additional books and resources that will complement the third grade curriculum. I highly recommend that you check that one out. Don't forget that if you want to see what we're up to on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.